How do you draw anything? You know, to be a chef, you need to learn how to cook, what ingredients mix well together, in what quantity, how long to bake something for, but what's the equivalent for artists? What are those core skills that you need to learn to create or recognize good, delicious eye candy art? I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for well over a week, and now I teach art for a living. In this week's YouTube Art School episode, we'll take a look at the seven fundamentals of art. The same I teach all my students. The foundation skills for all artists. Uh-oh, uh -oh, I think class is starting. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. Also, pay the class fee of either one like or one sub. Experts agree, it's good value. Go ahead, I'll wait for you. All right, that's long enough. Let's get started. As an art teacher, and this will vary from teacher to teacher, but I consider there are seven art fundamentals. And I'm the only one who's correct, of course. Beginners often ask what to focus on when they begin their art journey, when they start to draw. And the answer is always fundamentals. Pros often wonder why their art is plateauing, maybe why they're not where they want to be in their career. The problem is always weak fundamentals. Fundamentals are fundamental to artists. That's deep. And here they are in the order that I'll go over them in today's class. First, we'll look at the fundamental of perspective, then construction, gesture, anatomy, color and light theory, composition, and then design. So if you were the artist's version of Thanos, you'd want one gem to represent all seven of those fundamentals to gain full power over your art. Doesn't sound as cool, but you get what I mean, right? If your fundamentals are solid, you should be able to draw or paint anything that you can imagine anything the first fundamental is perspective perspective is what makes the 2d things that you draw on paper or on canvas feel like they are three dimensions it's what gives volumes to shapes and it's what will make the things that you draw feel like they belong in their environments why does everything seem to get smaller as it gets farther away hmm why does your drawing look flat how does foreshortening work the fundamental of perspective helps make sense of all of that. You can get started by drawing simple boxes in perspective, initially without worrying about horizons and vanishing lines, but eventually, as you get more familiar, you can try one point perspective. Basically, all you would need for that is a horizon line, one vanishing point. From there, you just gotta draw a square and then use the vanishing lines starting from each of the corners to add depth to your box, going from a 2D shape now to a 3D volume. From there, you can move on to two-point perspective and then three-point perspective and beyond. I hear artists saying perspective seems hard, but it's one of the easier fundamentals to grasp. There really isn't much to it. It just seems way scarier than it actually is. The second fundamental is construction. To build anything, to create anything, there is always a process of construction. It's your understanding of the building blocks of art that allows you to eventually draw technically good drawings from imagination. If this fundamental is weak, you'll usually feel like you always need to use references and can't draw anything without them. Of course, the goal in using references is to build up your visual library so that eventually you can draw without references. Most things you draw can and should be simplified down to simple geometric shapes. The idea here being that you use those simple shapes to block out the drawing to construct it. And then, only then you focus on the details, right? It's a lot easier to draw a bunch of cylinders in perspective than it is to draw an arm with all its anatomy. Draw the cylinders first in the right perspective and then use those simple volumes as the foundation for the rest of the details of the anatomy. Way easier. You wanna draw a head or anything else for that matter? Construction plays a huge part here too. It's the same for everything. You can get good at this fundamental by practicing drawing simple geometric shapes since that's what is used for construction. You know, like boxes, cylinders, spheres from different angles. Might seem silly to some people, but drawing simple geometric shapes is one of the most important. One of the first thing anyone looking to become an artist should get good at. I actually have a recent class to show a bunch of exercises to practice that exact stuff. 
So check it out. I'll have a link down in the video description. I'm just giving you an overview of the fundamentals in this class so that you have an idea of what to focus on. But I also created a kind of a study plan that guides you through it all recently. And that would be my learn to draw in one year challenge video that you should definitely check out. It's been very popular. I'll have a link to that in the video description too. And well, if you need more guidance than that, like if you want me to take your hand and teach you all that stuff in great depth, much like you would learn it if you went to university for art. Well, check out my art program like over 16,000 other students have so far. In the program, I guide you week by week with exercises and video classes covering everything you would need to be a complete artist. And you're in luck since the program is on sale until the end of the month. So you still have some time to take advantage of the biggest discount of the year. Check it out with the link in the video description or in uh, the top right corner of the screen right there. All right, so the third art fundamental is gesture. Gesture is particularly important if you want to draw characters. It's what gives those characters their movement, their expressiveness, what makes them look not stiff. I always compare it to like cardio when it comes to fitness. It's good to do a little bit often. To practice gesture drawing, find reference photos of people in simple idle poses first, and then try drawing them using as few lines as possible giving yourself like between one to five minute max per pose. Don't focus on details. If you're starting, think of it as drawing a glorified stick man in the same pose with the same proportions as your reference. But as you get better, don't hesitate to try harder poses, more dynamic poses. And I also have a class for that, link below. Check it out. The next fundamental is anatomy, and this one is likely more familiar, especially since I just made a class for it. I have classes for everything. You're really missing out if you're not subscribed yet. Anatomy is the knowledge of the particular building blocks of the body. It focuses on the skeleton, the muscles and their function, and basically anything that can help us draw more accurate people or creatures. It's the most important skill that you should focus on if you want to be a character artist. If you only want to draw anime characters and you think that you don't need to learn anatomy, think again, son. Most anime or manga characters, even if they're very stylized, also have correct or at least believable anatomy that you can only achieve with a good grasp on that fundamental. Don't confuse art style with anatomy knowledge. To practice it, Copy from anatomy books, copy from fitness models or bodybuilder photos, copy from life. It's like learning the alphabet as a kid. You just got to learn all the letters or in this case, you know, all the body parts. Or if you need more help, check out my class on the topic. Link below again. The fifth fundamental is a group combining a few things, but it all has to do with light. So I call it color and light theory. Light is what gives everything its color and it's what makes everything visible. Light theory will focus more on values and shading. And it's what we use to go from a simple circle to what looks more like a sphere. Values, aka all shades of gray from pure white to pure black are influenced by the lights. So you can start practicing your shading and understanding of values by drawing simple balls or boxes under different lights and paying close attention to the gradients going from light to dark. You know what I'm about to say. I also have a class for that. Link down below. Check it out. And then when it comes to color theory, that's the knowledge of colors and their impact on human emotions. We're talking here about the colors found on the chromatic circle. If you draw using pigments instead of pixels, use the chromatic circle for pigment colors, like for real paint. If you draw digitally, use the colors of light instead. Colors have various properties like their value, their hue, and their saturation. And knowing how to select harmonious colors often comes from just understanding color harmonies. Essentially, universal combinations of colors that most people will find attractive. If you're starting, keep things simple by using a complementary color harmony, maybe. It's just made out of two colors, opposite on the chromatic circle, and you should always pick one as the dominant color. The dominant color will often have brighter values and be more saturated than the others. This will work for everything in color almost. So once again, I have a class on this topic. So make sure that you check it out in the video description. The sixth fundamental is composition. It's how you arrange the various elements of art in your pieces. It's very similar to text formatting for books, for example. It allows the viewer to digest the information more easily. Or if you're trying to tell a story, it gives you the tools to organize the various elements of your piece to get that story across. You can almost think of composition as presentation. You can present things well, or you can present things poorly. I'm repeating myself, but of course I have a tutorial that covers the topic. So, you know, have a look, link in the description. And then finally, the last fundamental 
is design. Going back to the book comparison, if formatting was like composition, the grammar and vocabulary of the book would be the equivalent to design in art. Bad design isn't very engaging, can even be repealing. Good design, on the other hand, can spark a lot of positive emotions in people. It can awe and it can inspire. Good designs are inspired by nature, taking inspiration from the patterns, the colors and textures that you see all around you. Design is all about how you combine all of it to create a unique recipe that's aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And one last time, you know it's coming. I have a class for that. Make sure you check it out down in the video description. I'll have a link to all of the different classes that I mentioned in the video today. And well, that's gonna be it for this week's class. Hopefully it was helpful. Let me know in the comments. Now, when you hear anyone talk about art fundamentals, you should know exactly what that is. And hopefully it was a good refresher if you already knew about them or some of them. Now, if you're still around, you've clearly been a good student, so you get freebies. I'm sharing with you one of my two custom brush sets full of brushes that I use all the time, including many that I use uh, for the art in today's class. You can download the pack with the link in the video description. If this video was helpful, share it with your artist friends, share it with your best friend's mom, and make sure you hit that bell button to be notified as soon as next week's video.